Welcome back to Untermeyer Gardens. We're going to take a tour of the walled garden today. And I think we're going to focus mainly on trees and shrubs. I might mix a few perennials in here and there. But let's take a look at what we planted out here in the Great Lawn to begin with. Immediately flanking the main entrance to the walled garden is this pair of Sursipulum japonicum red fox. The red fox cultivar name comes from that dark maroon foliage. That color holds largely throughout the whole year. It's kind of fun. It works with our rusty deer cage as well. This plant stays maybe about 15 feet wide and can go ahead and get 40 to 50 feet tall. Uh, behind it, you can see some of Untermeyer's original catsuras or Cercidophyllums. These have been here at least 100 years. The original plants when Untermeyer planted the walled garden. So this is one of my favorite trees, not just in the garden, but in general. It's Cedrus atlantica and it's in the Glauca group, Glauca for this blue foliage. It's native to the Atlas Mountains of North Africa. And this is an adolescent specimen. We planted this maybe five or six years ago. And the inspiration for this particular planting, other than help soften the front of this facade, is we have a great mature specimen that Untermeyer planted inside the walled garden. So we're standing in the south border of the walled garden, which was one of the very first borders we planted. And kind of surprisingly, I was enchanted by it right away. And as it continues to develop, it's just more and more fun. It's really holding together. So I'd like to take you through some of the plants that are very interesting to me here. We have Calicanthus Ralstonii. It's a hybrid. This is a cultivar called Hartledge Wine. Interestingly enough, it's named after my first employer after college, Richard Hartledge, who worked with J.C. Ralston at the North Carolina State University Arboretum where this plant was developed. Um, a really good small tree, large shrub, um, very fragrant flower, very fragrant foliage and stems as well. It's a really fun plant. Stepping back, um, another small to medium sized tree, 10 to 15 feet tall. It's a kusa or Korean dogwood. Cornus kusa sun gold is the cultivar, named for those very brilliant leaves that foliage and variegation holds all year long. Here it's paired with an underplanting of Hakanakloa macra aureola, which is the Japanese forest grass. Um, both of these plants look good most all year long. The Kusa dogwood gets really great pink, then into red fall color. And the Hakanakloa turns a tawny color and is a real interest all through the winter long. Stepping back a little bit behind these plants growing on the wall of the walled garden um, are three vines that are some of my favorites. We have Another hydrangea, Anomala petiolaris. This is a variegated form. It's growing all the way to the top of the wall and the flower buds are just starting to form. Next to that, we have a Parthenocissus called Finway Park. It was a selection um, made by an employee at the Arnold Arboretum up in Boston on his way to a baseball game. It was growing up in an apartment near the stadium. That chartreuse foliage is a real show through the season. It'll get to 50 feet tall. Um, it's already going up and over the wall here and going down the other side. Mixed in with that is a second Parthenocissus called Henrii. It's a species. And if you look very closely, you can see sort of a dusty red foliage that fades to green through the summer, but it keeps those silver mid ribs all year long. It's kind of a stunner to look at. And finally, another Ralston hybrid of Calicanthus. This is a cultivar called Venus. It has a white flower instead of the wine red flower of the Hartledge wine, just as fragrant, and you can use it the same way. Again, a small tree, large shrub, 10 to 15 feet by 10 to 15 feet. So here we are now in the west border of the walled garden. Um, one of my favorite spots at the moment, juxtaposed against our construction project, the restoration of the Temple of the Sky. Here I'm in front of a Baptisia, a false indigo. This one's called Purple Smoke, but any cultivar you find is worth growing. It's a lot of fun, it's great color, great seed pods, great leaves, um, just a really strong plant, almost overgrowing its space here. 
um, next to that, we have one of our more esoteric plants in the garden. It's a Quercus dentata pinnatophyta, and it's these crazy leaves, which have just lost their pink spring hue, unfortunately, but I've never seen an oak leaf leaf look anything like that. This is supposed to be a plant that only grows to 10 or 15 feet tall. I think we're already at 15 feet and it's only been in here a few years. So we'll see how that works for us. But next to that with sort of a similar leaf pattern is a Sambucus nigra black lace. This is an elderberry, obviously selected for that amazing dark foliage finally dissected and we're just starting to see some of the flowers which that white and pink to contrast that foliage behind it and we've been talking mainly about what is this week um, and we're going to continue for a little bit um, as a filler plant we have this Dutzia gracilis nico it's a nice filler plant billowing out of the front of the border and all through spring for several weeks we get these great white flowers that's paired with a Wygelia, sort of an old-fashioned plant. This is a cultivar called Wine and Roses. I think you can pick up on the rose color from the flower, but the wine comes from this dark foliage, which we really like to use throughout the garden. Next to that um, dark foliage, and it really starts to pop because of it, is this Verbascum. It's a seed-grown plant. There's a lot of species of Verbascum you can work with. Um, this one is particularly notable for its gray foliage. One thing to keep in mind with the verbascum, it is a biennial. So the first year it just forms a whirl of leaves and the second year it starts to form a flower scape, which you see emerging there. It'll go ahead and flower in yellow for us and start to sew itself around a little bit. Next to that is a Glossium Flavum. It's called, I believe, uh, Yellowhorn Poppy. And it's, it's not even in flower at the moment. You can see some buds starting to emerge, but we're growing it as much for that fine dissected gray foliage as anything else. We will look forward to a nice flower here in a couple weeks. So here we are next to the Stoa. And I will throw in one perennial for today's tour. This is Silene Dioica. It's a bit of a self-sower, and you can see it gives us this really bountiful pink display in the early to mid-spring. In fact, we just had Memorial Day this week, and it already feels like summer here at Untermeyer. Um, one reason we planted this is because we had so many people showing so much interest in this Oricaria oricana, or the monkey puzzle tree. People would walk in there and they would have to touch it, which is something I wouldn't recommend the foliage is extremely rigid and extremely pointy. If you accidentally back into it, it, it it'll let you know about it. It will bite you right away. Um, once it matures, it's supposed to have some pretty gnarly cones as well. Um, we'll let you know how that happens. This is a marginally hardy plant here in the Northeast. We've not had any problems growing it uh, since Steve Burns, our president, picked it out. I think our very first planting season here at Untermeyer Gardens. Um, from the mountains of Chile. So if you're gonna use it, find a protected spot for it. And behind me here is a stunning display, just a little bit off of peak right now, of Wisteria floribunda. Our gardener, Drew Schuyler, has been working on this plant for years now to get it to flower as beautifully and gracefully as you can see it happening here. Um, this plant can be an exotic invasive, but here in the walled garden, growing on the stoa, we can keep control of it, um, not only in its size, but its spread. And it really presents quite a show against this architecture. So we just moved all our annuals and tropicals out of the greenhouse. I'm sitting in front of next week's jobs. Um, in the meantime, it's been great to walk around the garden with you, and we'll see you next week.